everyone. As requested by some of my students and comments from other videos, today we are going to talk about fields. This is my favorite topic of the whole course. I was actually kind of mad uh, when last semester and summer they removed this part of the course. It's really interesting and I really like to talk about this. Uh, so first of all, definition of fields. A field F is operation addition and multiplication and two special distinguished elements 0 and 1. Notice that 0, 1 here, we don't really mean the number 0 and 1. We actually mean right here the additive identity and multiplicative identity. So they don't necessarily have to be 0 and 1. Okay? But in this course, you'll see uh, we only talk about number fields, so it's mostly just 0 and 1. Anyway, those are just um, symbols. The first sentence just means that a field F has to have two operations, okay, and two elements, the additive identity and multiplicative identity. Okay, so the first axiom is closure. This means that the elements has to, uh, if you add them together, if X and Y are in F, then if you add them together, the sum has to be in F as well. Same for multiplication. Associative, well, it's just the same meaning as in numbers. Uh, commutative, which means you can switch orders. Identities, um, this is an important one, 0 plus x equals to x. So this is an additive identity, which means if you add any of your element to our 0, you still get x. Um, 1 times x equals to x, this is a multiplicative identity. 5 inverses. So if we have any x in the field, then there exists w in the field such that x plus what no x plus w equals to zero. And we write w as negative x. Notice that this is just a symbol, we don't really mean negative x, okay? And call it the additive inverse or negative of x. The other one is a multiplicative inverse for any non-zero. This is important, non-zero. For any non-zero x in the field, there exists w in f such that x times w equal to 1. And we write w as this. Again, this is just a symbol as this and call it the multiplicative inverse or reciprocal of x. The last one is distributive. I'm pretty sure everyone's familiar with this one. Um, those three, those not three, those six axioms are the most important part of this whole video, okay? Make sure you know every single one of them, know them by heart, because when you um, do the proof, you need to well, specify which axiom you used, and we'll see that later. Give you some definition of, okay, those are not fields. First of all, the integers under your operations. The your operations, I mean just um, the operation you know, the addition, multiplication, like the, the operation you know. Later, I'll introduce you the IU operation, and you'll see about that. So, why is integers not a field? I'll give you an example. For example, 2 is in this. However, However, we don't have, there exists no w in that, such that 
2 times w equals to 1, which means 2 inverse does not exist. Okay? So this does not have multiplicative inverse or reciprocals. That is why it's not a field. Um, the second one is 0 to infinity under real operations is not a field. For example, uh, what is a good example here? Okay. For example, um, the negative of 3 does not exist. Okay, so you we know that 3 is in this, but there does not exist. Okay, let's write it. 3 is in 0 to infinity. However, there does not exist w in 0 to infinity such that 3 plus w equals to 0. Okay? Same thing, I just wrote it in a formal way. The third one, minus 1 to 1 under your operations is not a field. Um, this one is not closed under addition. Um, let's see. 3 over 4 is in this. However, if you add 3 over 4 plus 3 over 4, okay, this sum is not in minus 1 to 1, which means it's not closed under addition. I'll give you some examples of fields as well, okay? Um, let's write it here. Examples of fields. The most um, well-known one is serial numbers, okay? Um, another one is all the rational numbers. The other one, let's Think. Okay, those are under your operation. Another one would be quotient functions. So let's see fx over g of x, where our f, g are polynomials. Um, here we just talk about real numbers, so over real numbers, okay? Also, g cannot be zero. So those are fields. All of those three satisfy um, those six axioms, okay? So if you want to check if something is a field, you need to check every single one of them. It's quite important, so I don't. I actually don't think they will let you check that because it's too long and tedious. Um. Anyway, as I mentioned before, in this course we only talk about number fields, but in some other courses you might see some other fields. Okay. Um. So take more math courses. It's quite fun. Proposition. The first proposition is let f be a field with x is an elemental field. Then there exists a unique, unique, unique w in f such that x plus w equals to zero. This means, well, negative is unique. So to prove it's unique, let's suppose that it's not unique. Assume that w and w prime are both in f such that both of them are negative of x. So that's what it means. 
x plus w equals to x plus w prime equals to zero. The next step, I just added w on both sides. Both sides, I mean here. Okay. Notice that if you wanna add something, okay, if you wanna add something to the equation, you can only add to the same side. What does that mean? You can either add both here, okay, or you can add both here. Has to be on the same side. You can either add it to the left or you can add it to the right, all right? Anyway, so for me, I added W on both sides on the left. So, I mean on both sides of the equation, okay? And uh, I added and then I used associative law, so I tried to... Um, bracket those together so that I can add them together. Now, since we know that w, we know, we know w plus x equals to zero. So we know this becomes zero, that becomes zero, right? Therefore, since we know it's zero, we know that it's zero plus w equals to zero plus w prime. Okay, um, by the way, I should add something here. Okay, I said I used commutative because, um, I, here I used x plus w, here is w plus x, so I switched the order, but I should also add, um, um, let's see, additive inverse. Because I use the fact x plus w equal to zero. Anyway, uh, you should not skip steps like I just did. This is not a good example. But um, here we have zero plus w equals to zero plus w prime. And we know zero is an additive identity. Okay, if you add to anything equals to anything. So zero plus w equals to w zero plus w prime give you w prime so we use the zero is a additive identity so i refer to it therefore we get w equals to w prime which means um the negative of x is unique okay i need some water okay Proposition 2. If f is a field, then a times 0 equals to 0 for all a in the field. So now, first of all, we have a times 0. We know that 0 equals to 0 plus 0. Okay, so we know this is true. So we can write a times 0 as a times 0 plus 0, and you use distributive law. You can distribute them out, then you'll get a times 0 equals to a times 0 plus a times 0. Now, if you add um, the negative of a times 0 on both sides, Again, you have to add them on the same side. So I added this on both sides. I added on the right. You have to add them on the same sides. Okay. Anyway, um, I added them on the same sides and I use associative law to bracket them together so that I can get zero here. This will give you zero. And this whole thing will give you 0. Therefore, you will get 0 equals to a times 0 plus 0, which 
I used the uh, additive inverse. And this will give you a times zero because zero is the additive identity. So eventually you get a times zero equals to zero. Um, one example I wanted to give you is a field 